You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Future Tech Health podcast. I have Samantha Gladish. Uh, she's an author of multiple books. The new one is The 30-Day Hormone Solution. She's a holistic wellness coach. Website is holisticwellness.ca. So, Samantha, thanks for coming. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me here, Richard. Yeah, if you would, um, tell me your origin story. I've noticed that people in the wellness space always seem to have some you know, great problem that they've overcome hopefully that's not your case but maybe uh if it is it's a good thing regardless because you have overcome it by being here so yeah absolutely um that that's so true there is a lot of people in the wellness space that have had kind of their own issues with their health and then kind of dive into health um and really take their health into their own hands to really overcome it and that's sort of part of my story um i really grew up in a household where my mother made everything from scratch and um I was always around my my mother and my grandmother, and they always made everything from scratch. And um, my mother would like cringe at prepackaged food. And so I was really lucky that I grew up in a household just around really amazing, healthy food and food from the garden. And so I was always kind of innately interested in in food and wellness and nutrition. Um, I was a really active young girl and just loved being outside and really connected to nature and whatnot. Um, but it was really more so in my teens. And when, you know, I got my cycle and my period, I had a lot of discomfort and cramps and migraines and headaches and a lot of digestive issues that were going on. And so I, I went on the birth control pill as most young girls do. And that seemed to be kind of the solution to all hormonal issues. Um, and it really wasn't until I got into um, my, my early 20s and I started diving into nutrition and I, I applied to nutrition school. I remember that first week at school, I learned all about the birth control pill and how I was taking synthetic hormones and how it was destroying my gut and impairing ovulation and whatnot. And so I ditched the pill and really decided to take my health into my own hands and um, kind of revamp my diet and my supplement regimen to really support my hormones specifically. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of part of it. And that's, um, you know, I kind of got into nutrition school mainly because I, I was just personally interested and, and wanted to, um, and just really wanted to know the information and kind of for selfish reasons for myself. Um, in fact, I didn't even realize at the time, like, oh yeah, I guess I could go on and do this as a career. This is amazing. Um, and then, um, it really wasn't until later, uh, a couple of years ago in 2017, um, that I got diagnosed with autoimmune Hashimoto's and, um, that kind of led onto an even deeper journey of kind of having to level up my health routine and, um, really working to get my Hashimoto's into remission. Yeah, actually it's, it's interesting you bring it up. I, I wouldn't have thought about this at all, uh, a few years ago, but now I think differently, you know, having had my own health issues, but can you spend just a couple of minutes talking about the pill again, years ago, I would have thought, not even thought about it, just, Oh, people take the pill and they've been on it for years and it's safe and it's totally fine. But what, um, with your new knowledge, tell me about the pill and what does it do to women that take it, especially long-term? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a really important question. And I, I work with a lot of women in my practice who have post birth control pill syndrome, which is actually a, a real thing. Um, so, you know, I get that the pill was, it really gave women this sort of liberation over their freedom of their body and sexuality and whatnot, but it also comes with a host of different side effects and issues and um, which are not often talked about. And uh, you know, I know for myself back at 
what, 16, 17, when I initially went on the pill, you know, I was just handed the pack of pill in my doctor's office and sent on my way. And that was it. I wasn't told about any warnings or, or anything like that. And so, you know, there are actually a ton of studies out there that link the birth control pill to different sort of estrogen dominant type cancers. So specifically um, ovarian cancer or breast cancer, um, all forms of hormonal contraceptives will actually increase your risk of cancer. You know, you're taking synthetic hormones. So especially, so, so what's really happening is when you're taking these hormones, you are essentially shutting down your ovaries capabilities of producing its own hormones. Um, so your ovaries in a sense kind of go lazy and they're like, well, okay, we're taking synthetic hormones. I guess we don't really need to produce our own. And so they really stop working at their optimal, you know, functionality and because you're taking uh, synthetic hormones. And so, and what that does is it really creates this, you know, altered state in your body. It shuts down ovulation. Ovulation is part of your cycle. Um, in fact, ovulating is how you produce your estrogen and your progesterone. Um, so, you know, ovulation is essentially the, the most important part of, of our womanhood. And regardless whether you want to be pregnant or not, having a healthy cycle and being fertile is really, really important. So I'm myself, I'm 36 years old. I actually don't have any intentions to, to have kids. My partner and I are both on the same page and, and um, we don't want to have children. Um, and so I still want to remain fertile because it means that I have healthy hormones. I have a regular cycle. Um, we want to really remain as fertile as we can for as long as we can, again, regardless of wanting to get pregnant or not. So I think that Sometimes when I say fertility, a lot of women, um, you know, instantly think of pregnancy. Of course, I get that. But fertility um, and remaining fertile overall. And so the pill really shuts down ovulation. Um, it starts to disrupt your microbiome. And, you know, we have a lot of incredible microbes and, and that help us produce hormones that help us produce different nutrients and whatnot, like your B12. Um, but the pill really disrupts this delicate balance of good and bad bacteria in the gut. So it really starts to um, uh, really ruin the integrity of the gut and the gut lining. Um, so you've got the ovulation issue, you've got gut issues. It also starts to impact your thyroid. Um, it also causes a ton of nutrient deficiencies. So it uh, depletes your body's ability to produce certain B vitamins. It's depleting zinc, magnesium, vitamin C, all these essential nutrients that a woman needs for healthy hormones and for a healthy cycle and for healthy detoxification. Um, it starts to disrupt digestion, um, liver detox, especially, uh, you know, your liver is your main detoxifying organ, every single thing that comes into your body, your liver is is working to detox that. And so it can really slow down that detox process, um, especially synthetic hormones, you know, your liver works hard to metabolize and detox those hormones. So it's got to work extra to really get the pill out, um, so to speak. So, um, you know, it causes a lot of issues, uh, hormonally speaking, and, and symptomatically, and in fact, I have so many women that uh, they they come off of the pill and then they develop polycystic ovarian syndrome from from using the pill, um, and they never had that before. And we're starting to learn that the pill can actually have um, it plays a role in how our body utilizes insulin. And so we have these women who go on the pill and then they come off and they want to get pregnant. And now they're having, they're not having a cycle at all. Their cycle has been missing for months and months. Um, and then sure enough, they go to the doctor and do more testing and they have PCOS and more so insulin resistant PCOS. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of what's really going on there with with the pill. And I'm finding it's becoming this real epidemic and women are just not educated or being educated by their doctors and medical doctors about the detriments that the pill can really cause. Oh, it's tough <laughs> yeah. because uh, unfortunately people have never seemed to have found a solution that's as good as nature and people want these solutions. And so what are you supposed to do? Like if you, you know, if you think about the detriments of, for instance, the pill, and you want to be sexually active as a woman, you know, like, well, I guess there's other alternatives, but they're not as easy. And it just, I guess, I, I just wonder if people would feel they need this help from the medical system. And if they don't have it, they may feel, you know, what am I supposed to do? Right. Because I yeah. guess if you realize that the medical system, unfortunately, 
in my opinion, just doesn't seem to help in a lot of areas. It can't, unfortunately, but what do you do? You know, it's kind of scary. Absolutely. And I get it. Like, it's so easy to go and pop this pill every day. I did it myself for, you know, almost eight years. And, and um, there really are a ton of other solutions, but it really comes down to women having to take that responsibility of truly owning their health and understanding their hormones and really understanding their cycle. So this is a really big part of what I talk about in my book, The 30 Day Hormone Solution, and really guiding women through their cycle the different phases of their cycle and what to look out for and um, how to kind of track and monitor their cycle. And so I, I don't personally love hormonal contraceptives. Um, the other option might be to consider something like the copper IUD. Um, this is non-hormonal. The, the only thing is some women do experience some issues with the copper IUD And um, they might have like heavier bleeding or they might have some cramping, whereas other women don't experience that at all. So it's it's worth a try. Um, The thing to keep in mind, though, too, with the copper IUD is that copper can actually deplete your body's ability to absorb zinc. So if you do that, you would probably have to supplement with a, you know, pretty fair dose of zinc um, so that you can really help to manage those ratios. Um, so the copper IUD, it's a, it's a really good option for sure. Um, but again, it's not going to be the solution for all women. Um, I personally, I just really track and monitor my cycle. So without going into too much detail, but um, you know, women can definitely go online and, and look up things like natural family planning, where you're basically, you know, you take your temperature, you track your cervical mucus throughout the month, and then you really know the dates that you're ovulating. And it would be during that window of ovulation that you just use protection. You can use something like condoms or you avoid sex altogether, but you kind of know your window of ovulation. I think there's also this misconception that a lot of women think that they can get pregnant all of the time, especially I know myself as a teenager and a younger girl. Sure, maybe my hormones were a little bit more erratic at that time. Perhaps I could have gotten pregnant at any time. But, um, you know, as we get old, older, you know, it's so important to really tune in and understand your body because um, you can't get pregnant at, at any time. You know, you only do have this one window of opportunity. So outside of that window, you really are safe. So if you can actually understand and really track and monitor your cycle and know when you're ovulating, then then you're fine. You don't need to worry about barrier methods and using hormonal contraceptives of any sort. Yeah, what I was just about to ask you. Um... It also seems like when taking medications that doctors just say, here's a medication, have a nice day. And like, for instance, uh, you know, this is a little bit different, but metformin, from what I've read, depletes B12 and maybe some other B vitamins. And you mentioned that a copper IUD can, you know, cause you not to absorb zinc and the pill causes you not to absorb other nutrients. And it just seems like, again, another downside is that probably every medication that people take deplete something else so they need to supplement and that guidance isn't given when you're given it so there's another area yet where people need to look more deeply absolutely you know our medical system doesn't practice root cause medicine um our medical system you know don't get me wrong for a real emergencies um there it's it's so important and and we're lucky to have it but Uh, when we have these issues like high blood pressure or diabetes, especially type two diabetes, it's a lifestyle disease. You know, I reverse so many type two diabetes in my practice um, simply by different lifestyle intervention and using specific supplements and herbs, as well as getting clients on a really nutrient anti-inflammatory meal plan. I mean, it's, it's really not difficult. It's really, really not. Um, And so, you know, we work with so many type two diabetics who, but, um, you know, really is as, as patients, we need to really take it into our own hands. I think that we often just kind of give away our power thinking that our doctors are almighty and know all. Um, and again, like I said, they definitely serve a purpose, especially in emergency situations, but with a lot of health conditions, um, there are so many incredible alternatives. And I do think that, you know, working with the right practitioner, who can really dive in deeper and understand about your health history and understand about what you're eating and what your lifestyle is like and what your sleep is like and your sleep and your stress is like, all of this plays a role. And it's not something that 
number one, your doctor is actually educated in, or number two, doesn't even have enough time to go through all of that with you because most doctor visits are seven minutes. Well, that's ridiculous. They don't, uh, you know, I hear doctors aren't educated in nutrition and they're not educated in, you know, the effects of the pills they give. So, I mean, what are they educated in, by the way? I guess just giving pills, cutting yeah. you open. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, again, it's my opinion, but, it, you know, what, what's the point? of their education if it doesn't really like help people for the most part, in my opinion. Yeah. And I mean, this is definitely, you know, we could totally go down the rabbit hole here, but I do think that, um, you know, there's a lot of it is so pharmaceutically driven. Right. Um, and, uh, and so it's something we, again, as patients need to be really conscious of because, uh, it's, it's pretty scary how many clients I do work with that are coming into my clinic and well, my virtual online clinic and are, you know, on seven or eight different medications with a ton of different side effects. And, um, they're not helping. They're just not helping and diet and supplements and lifestyle and sleep and stress just has not even been addressed with them. So, yeah, I, you know, I haven't thought of this before being a guy, but, um, you know, the woman's microbiome, especially I guess the, you know, as she cycles, that changes, you know, every month. And I'm sure the microbiome dramatically changes over the month. And I just wonder, uh, you know, what goes on. And I don't even know if it's been studied barely at all. I mean, we hear about the gut microbiome, but, you know, I, I have no clue what's going on with the woman's microbiome. I wonder if there's been studies on it. Yeah, actually, that's a really great question. I'm I'm not familiar of, of any study specifically with that. But, you know, what we need to keep in mind, too, is specifically with childbirth, right? For, for women, um, when you are um, having, you know, a natural birth, and you have a child pass through the birth canal, um, they're picking up all of that really important bacteria, which is what builds their gut and builds their immune system. Um, so, pharmaceuticals are going to impact your microbiome, your diet and sugar and gluten, these things will impact your microbiome. Um, stress will impact your microbiome. So all of these things play a role. And um, we definitely, um, I mean, not just women, we want everybody to have um, a healthy microbiome and, you know, um, real Im uh, like important gut integrity there. It plays a real role, especially with autoimmune and whatnot. So it's, um, it's so important, especially for women who are thinking about conceiving to really optimize their diet and really support their health in a really big way so that um, they can, you know, have, have healthy pregnancy and, and healthy children. Well, it also makes me think when a lot of pills went through their clinical trials or developed I don't know, I, I haven't ever even heard or thought to look, you know, where women tested or just men? And at what stage of the cycle were the women? You know, were they in menopause? Were they not in menopause? Again, what's, were they ovulating? Were they not? So now I wonder, women have to probably be a lot more aware of any pills they take, any medications, because depending on what part of their cycle they're in, it could probably dramatically affect them. Same medication, same person. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely something to look in deeper and, and something I haven't uh, truly expo explored in terms of um, medication use or dosage in a women's cycle. Are there any, I mean, so you've worked with a lot of people over a long time. What are, what are some of the insights you've gotten that, you, I don't know, just really surprised you about uh, how people react to medications, how they react then to, you know, positive interventions or the functional medicine? Any yeah, insights there? Absolutely. I mean, in my practice, in times this can be the case is that I'm sort of the last resort and, um, you know, I'm sure that a lot of different naturopaths or nutritionists and functional medical doctors sort of feel the same way as, you know, we have these patients or these clients that have gone the medical route and many years later are still not getting better. And so they kind of hit this rock bottom and um, we end up becoming this last resort where they come to seek us and um, get our support and our and our guidance to to really bring about healing. And so I feel at that point, many you know, many of my clients are, I would say all of my clients are, are 1000% open to what it is. I, um, you know, whatever protocol it is I'm introducing for them. Um, now might there be some hesitancy about taking someone's cough, helping them reduce their sugar or take gluten out? Yes, absolutely. Um, I would say that there tends to be more hesitation around diets, um, diet, uh, preferences than there is taking a supplement. Um, so I do feel that, you know, once clients come to me, they're really at a point where they're just 
they've really hit their rock bottom, their symptoms, their pain, whatever it is they may be experiencing has, um, is really at a point where it's taking over their quality of life. And so they are really willing to do anything to, to make a difference. And so their compliance is, is pretty great at that point. What's, um, are there a lot of outliers that you just haven't been able to help or have you pretty much been able to help everybody? I know everyone's different, but in general, does it take months for someone to really help themselves or can they get it be accomplished in weeks? Yeah. I mean, it really depends. I, you know, within my scope of practice, I specialize really in weight loss and women's hormonal health. So um, if anybody is coming to me with issues outside of that, then I'm definitely going to refer them out. And, you know, I really only want to work with those whom I know I can support. And I'm not here to say that I can kind of do it all. So I really want to help give people um, really connect them with the people who are really going to be the best fit for them. Um, so within the weight loss and hormone scope, that is really where my expertise lies. And so I've got over 500 weight loss transformations. So that's definitely a big expertise of mine and um, really from, you know, dietary perspective uh, and really helping to support clients diets and um, what they're eating you know at the end of the day I always say I help women lose weight and support their hormones by eating delicious food and I think there's a really big misconception there that when it comes to hormonal health and when it comes to weight loss you have to eat food that's really bland and boring and that's really not the case Um, so within the women that I've worked with you know whether that's PCOS or type 2 diabetes or menopause, um, or weight loss and any kind of weight loss resistance that's going on, um, helping women with their cycle and fertility. That's really the scope that I work with. And we have a really, really high success rate. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, it also comes down to our clients having to really take responsibility and having to take action and really implement what it is that we are proposing. And it's nothing drastic. It's nothing crazy. You know, we coach and support our clients through, um, through our programs. And so there's a lot of support and there's a whole lot of love and there's a whole lot of accountability, Um, but each person is so unique and so individual. So it really just depends um, what kind of approach we're going to take, but um, we definitely have a really high success rate. Um, And for anybody that's listening, who feels like they are struggling pause or PMS or fertility or PCOS or weight loss, um, you know, I really want them to know that there is, there is another way and it doesn't have to be challenging and it doesn't have to be difficult and there really is a way to find your way back to yourself and truly thrive and where can you uh, where can clients work with you is can they do it over the internet or they have to be local what are your areas yeah i'm online so pretty much globally i've got clients all over which is really really wonderful and they can connect with myself and my team at holisticwellness.ca um, we have a lot of different programs available we have some online group coaching programs and then we also have some more inclusive programs for those who want to coach with us one on one there's myself as well as my other coach uh, where we work with clients and yeah so online which is wonderful cuz i can reach people globally and um Should they read your recent book before they see you or should they, you know, maybe do an initial consult first, then read it? And what's your suggestion there? Yeah, I mean, that that really doesn't matter. That's up. That's up to the person. Um, The 30 day hormone solution is is available for pre order. So which is really, really exciting. I just got my hands on the advanced copy and um, they they can dive into that at any point. Um, That really is a is a book that was written for, you know, I thought to myself, if I only had 30 days to spend with somebody, what is it that I would really teach them? Like if I had this woman in front of me for 30 days, like how, what can I teach her about her body, about her hormones, about her health, about life, about food and nutrition. I put it all into that book. And so it's got some amazing gluten-free grain-free recipes. There's uh, 60 amazing recipes in there that I really do hope will become family favorites. Um, And uh, the first half of the book, really dives into women's cycles as well as adrenal health and thyroid health and blood sugar and detox and sleep with some really amazing protocols in there. So it's definitely a great place to start if um, you are kind of just dipping your foot into the natural health world, um, then it's definitely a a great place to start and will help really build that foundation for you. Okay. And what's the date of the formal release of your newest book? It will be available December 17th, 2019 of this year. Okay. And it probably will be Barnes and Noble, Amazon, et cetera. 
Oh, oh yes, absolutely. Like, yes. So it's available for pre-order right now. And um, if anyone's interested, they can head on over to hormonesolutionbook.com. There are 350 amazing free uh, pre-order bonuses for anybody that wants to pre-order the book. And the uh, yeah, the bonuses are really amazing. So we dive into an autoimmune healing meal plan, and we've got a gut healing guide, as well as an essential hormone labs for women um, that they can speak to their doctor about. So we've got some really amazing bonuses over there uh, for anybody that wants to pre-order. All right. Well, that's great. Well, Samantha, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, I don't know, there's probably 10,000 more questions than before we started, but at least uh, asking these questions is better than just assuming they don't apply and, you know, dealing with, uh, with healthcare as it currently is without any of these incidents. So uh, I appreciate you coming. Yes. Thank you so much for having me here. You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Thank you.